All right, so we're starting a new packet from the College Board. And it starts off um, with a lot of words, but they're, they're important for uh, conceptual situations. So we all know one of the versions of the fundamental theorem of calculus is this. So we have the integral from B, A to B of F prime of X dx. So you find the antiderivative of F prime, which is F. And then you um, plug in the B and A and you subtract. But one thing I want you to pay attention to is for contextual situations, you can interpret this by saying, if you integrate the rate of change of a function over an interval, interval from A to B, you will determine the amount of change in that function between A and B. All right. And then that can be transposed um, by kind of solving it for f of b by adding the f of a. And for contextual situations, you can interpret this by saying if you start with an initial value at a and add the amount of change that has taken place over the interval from a to b, you will determine, determine the value of the function at b. Right, so, and we've done this, but it's, it does take a little bit for it to kind of sink in. So, for example, if the initial population of a town is 5,500 people, and the population is changing at a rate of P prime of T people per year, then 5,500 plus the interval from 0 to 10 of that P prime of T dt will determine the population of the town after 10 years. All right. So for each of these following situations, we're going to write a definite integral that will determine the requested quantity, but we're not going to um, evaluate these intervals yet. We're going to wait and do that on the next page. All right. So there are 30 gallons of pollutant in the lake at time t equals zero. The number of gallons, P of t, of the pollutant change at a rate of P prime of T equals that kind of crazy function, gallons per day, where T is measured in days. We're going to write a definite integral that, um, definite integral expression to determine the amount of pollutant in the lake after um, 12 days. So if we want P of 12, we're going to start with P of zero and we're going to add the integral from 0 to 12 of p prime of t dt. All right. Now we have actual values that we can put in. So according to the words, there's 30 gallons of pollutant in the lake at t equals 0. So p of 0 is going to be 30. All right. And then we'll just leave the rest like it is. Right. Now this one's a little different from what we've done before. Um, on all the ones we've done, I'm pretty sure we're adding on to the distances. This one, water is actually leaking out, so it's going to be slightly different. So water is leaking from a tank at a rate of the square root of t plus 1 gallons per minute. 10 minutes after the leak is discovered, there are 60 gallons of water in the tank. How much water was in the tank when the leak was initially discovered? Okay, so let's just call this W for water. So we want to find how much water was in the tank at time zero, basically. All right, so what we No, is after 10 minutes, there's 60 gallons, so we know W of 10. Well, since this water is leaking, I'm actually going to need to subtract the integral. And this is going to be kind of a weird integral because we're going to go from 10 to 0 of W prime of T dt, so how fast that water is leaking out. Okay, and then to go back and like actually put in things, I know that W of 10 is 60. 
and then I'll go ahead and put in that formula because I, I didn't I just made up the W. It wasn't given to me as W. Now that first one was given to me as P prime of T, so it's fine that I just I left it like that, but I'm I made up the W. Okay, let's talk about this pie. So pie is removed from an oven and after sitting 10 minutes is at a temperature of 220 degrees Fahrenheit. The pie cools at a rate of 3 natural log of x squared degrees Fahrenheit per minute. What is the expected temperature of the pie after 15 minutes or 15 minutes after it is removed from the oven? Okay, so let's call this P for pie. We want to know 15 minutes pie temperature. What we do know is 10 minute pie temperature and it's cooling. So since it's cooling, the temperature is decreasing and the amount is decreased has been from 10 to 15 of our P prime of T dt. And then we'll put in what we know. We know P of 10 is 220. And since I made up that P prime, I'll go ahead and put the function in. All right. Now this one, I actually probably should have done X instead of T because the function has X's on T. All right, and then four, throughout the day, people have entered a craft fair at a rate of E equals that, and people per hour, and exited at a rate of L equals that in people per hour. And if T is measured in hours since the fair opened and there were 200 people at the fair, at the end of the first hour, how many people should be at the fair after three hours after it's open? Okay. So let's do fair of three hours should equal the number of people that were at the fair first hour, one hour after it's open, plus one to three of how fast people are coming into the in and out, or the number of people are increasing or changing. All right, so what we do know is that after one hour, there are 200 people. All right, and then this the this F prime of T where um, the rate at which the number of people is changing is going to equal how quickly they're entering minus how quickly they're leaving DT. Okay, so these are the things that we need to go on. Now, the other stuff I wrote was just kind of like a guide to help you. All right, so part two. Some of the definite integrals can be evaluated by hand and others should be evaluated um, using a calculator. Two of the problems in part one can be worked out by hand, and two require the use of a calculator. So let's decide which is which, and then we'll go ahead and figure it out. So the first one, we have this, I think, a pretty weird function, um, because it has e, which isn't a big deal, but our exponent is the square, has a square root of t, and there's not anything there that we can kind of do u substitution. So number one is definitely going to be a calculator question. Okay. Number two, we do have an expression underneath a square root, which makes it kind of difficult. But the derivative of that expression is one, which makes it not so difficult. So two we can do by hand. All right, we look at number three. We have three times the natural log of x squared. The derivative of x squared is 2x, which makes it incredible, impossible for us to do by hand because we would have to have that derivative somewhere or at least have the x somewhere on the outside. So this is going to have to be a calculator question, which makes four definitely be by hand. 
Um, we're going to subtract two polynomial functions, which is going to give us a polynomial. And uh, integrating polynomials is not hard. Okay. So I'm going to write down each of these. And then some of them we'll do by hand, two of them we'll do by hand, and then two we will do in the calculator. So... I'm going to go ahead and make this square root of t plus 1, t plus 1 to the 1 half. And then on that, I went ahead and added E and L. All right, so let's look at the calculator ones. They're fairly easy. Well, actually, they're really easy. We are just going to do 30 plus the integral from 0. Whoops. Okay, so that is our decimal. We'll go ahead and round or truncate. We get the same thing. Oh, I forgot my DT. All right, and then we do want to give the units. So don't forget that when you integrate, um, you multiply by the independent variable. So that rate on that one was in gallons per day, and T was in days. So that is going to be gallons. And then to describe it, it's gallons of pollutant. In the lake at T equals 12 days. Okay. And then this one we're gonna we're going to do by hand. All right, so we have 60 and then minus, and then we'll find the um, antiderivative of that. So we add one to our exponent and that becomes our new exponent so t plus one stays in there our new exponent is going to be three halves and then we divide by that new exponent or we multiply by the reciprocal of it and then we're going to evaluate that from 10 to 0. okay so i'm just going to keep going here Okay, so when I plug in zero, 
I get zero plus one to the two, thir three halves, sorry. Minus, and then I'm going to plug in 10. To the three halves. So um, that's going to be two thirds, and then that's going to be one minus, and then um, that's going to be eleven to the three halves. And I can't do that without a calculator. Eleven to the three halves. Like for a second, I thought I was going to get nine, and then I could, but I can't. So I'm just going to leave the answer like that. It's messy, but it's fine. Okay, uh, number three is a calculator question. That's our value. We'll truncate or round, whichever you want to do. All right, now this one is all about um, the expected temperature of the pie, 15 minutes. And so that's going to be degrees Fahrenheit, 15 minutes. after was removed from the oven. Oh, and that one before, um, that's going to be the amount of water in the tank when the leak was discovered. So, and it's in gallons. So we're going to do gallons at T equals zero. Okay, and then this one, we've got some work to do, so we'll go ahead and combine our like terms in our integrands. I think I, I left off my T. So 16T, oh, it's minus. Let me fix it. There we go. All right, so I subtract 16 minus 12t, and that's going to give us 40. And then when I subtract negative 3, I get positive 3. Okay, so now I'll integrate that by adding 1 to my exponent and dividing by my new exponent. And we're going to evaluate that from 1 to 3. Now, this should be fun to do by hand. Um, it's doable. It's going to take some time. All right. So, I'll start off by putting in 3. 3 cubed is 27. 3 squared is 9. Okay. And then I will subtract what I get when I put it in one. Okay, so two seventy plus eighteen 
plus 9. So 270 plus 27 is going to be 297. And then 15. All right, so eventually we are going to get 482. Now let's look at what this means. We are trying to find how many people should be at the fair after three hours, three hours after it's open. So 482 people at the fair three hours after it opens. All right. Okay, so the next one we're going to do some matching. And this is not easy. Um, we like have to read this very, very closely and think about every one of them. To me, none of them are like super obvious. So we're going to read the problem the situation and match the integral expression in the left column to their interpretation in the right column. So on this situation, a pipeline main company manufactures pipe that sells for $100 per meter. That's the sell price, $100 per meter. The cost of manufacturing a por portion of the pipe varies with its distance from the beginning of the pipe. The company reports the cost to produce a portion of the pipe that's X meters from the beginning is CX dollars per meter. So that's the cost to produce. All right. And then one last note, because this does come up, that profit is defined as the difference between the amount of money received for selling and the amount it costs to manufacture. So yeah, I pretty much highlighted everything up there. All right, so we have all kinds of different formulas here. So I always want you guys to make a note that when when you see 100 in the, in the integrand, That represents the sale price. All right. And then when you see C of X, that represents manufacturing price or cost. And then when you see 100 minus D of X, what does that represent? That represents the profit. And all of these things down here are in dollars per meter, every one of them. All right. And then another thing I want just for, to remind you is that when you do an integral, um, you're multiplying the independent by the independent variable. So when integrating, units are multiplied. by the independent variable. <clears throat> All right, so if you integrate the manufacturing cost, that's in dollars per meter, all these X's, the X's is the number, or is the amount of pipe in meters. Um, so that just leaves you a dollar. Okay, so for number one, we have the integral from 0 to 125 of C of X dx. 
So remember, C of X is manufacturing cost. So this is definitely talking about manufacturing cost. And then the zero to 125 is talking about the amount of pipe. Um, so zero to 125 is 125 meters of pipe. And so that should match up with B. So the cost in dollars of manufacturing 125 meters of pipe because cost, the C function, is dollars per meter. What we're putting into that is meters, so that leaves us with dollars cost. Okay. All right, number two. We have this 1 over 125 in front, so that definitely is some kind of average. So when I'm looking at it, I see three different ones with average. So we're looking at C, E, or G. All right. And then my function is 100 minus C of X. So try to remember that down there, 100 minus C of X represents the profit. So that looks like it's going to be C, the average profit in dollars per meter made on the sale. Yeah. Made on the sale of 150 meters of pipe. That's where that zero, or 125, that's that zero to 125. All right, so we're good with that. Okay, and then the only difference between two and three is that two, my C prime, or my function C there is C prime and not C. So C prime is the, the rate of change of the cost. All right, so it's still an average because I've got that one over 125. So it's the average rate of change in dollars per meter per meter in the cost. So that needs to be E. Okay, and then when I look at four, the difference between one and four is one, I was going from zero to 125. For four, I'm going from 50 to 100. So it's still gonna give me cost of manufacturing, but it's not gonna be all 125 meters of pipe. It's just gonna be from 50 to 100. So it's the difference in the cost. Yeah, it's gonna be D. get five. The difference in four and five is that one over 150, which makes the average. So we're looking for an average difference in the cost per meter between manufacturing. So that's going to be G. All right, on six, don't forget that 100 means sale price. All right, and we're going from 50 to 100. So it's going to be a difference in the sale price between 50 and 100 meters of pipe, which is going to be A. And on number seven, it's going to be the profit difference between 100 and 50. So that's going to be F. Okay. So I want you to try to do one through eight on the next page on your own, and then check with mine whenever you're done. Pause the video. All right, so these were, to me, not quite as difficult as the other ones because some of them um, didn't have integrals. So T prime 
of four is the rate of change in the temperature at four. Like that's kind of old stuff, which I thought is a little easier, but you might not have in like six. T of four is just the temperature at four. Um, so then, and then we have um, some other ones. So check that. If you still have a question, then you can email me. And then your assignment is going to be the rest of the packet.